Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So, um, here we are once again, ready to get started on a new week. Um, for tonight, we're going to be working well on the new topics. We're going to continue talking about um, the passive voice and also, if possible, I would love it if we get to talk about a conversation that we have um, that we can get to practice as well. So, I hope you guys had an amazing weekend that you uh, enjoyed your time. You know, the ones who had to work well, you know, I hope you had something great going on at work. And for those who got to spend some time um, in your houses, I hope also you guys, you know, did some um, practice if possible, if you practice some English, because of course it's always going to be advisable. And um uh, if you didn't, well, anyway, hopefully you guys had an amazing weekend. That is going to be the question that I will be asking you in just a while. Um, as you already know, there's always going to be a little bit of a practice before every class. So for tonight, that is going to be it. That's that's going to be the question. Now, as I was saying, um, for tonight, we need to talk about the passive voice and uh, to continue to discover how we can express things that are caused by something and have an, an effect on a different thing. Um, so that's the main idea and the main thing that we're going to be following for tonight. And uh, without any further ado then, I would like to start hearing, you know, from you and from um, your answer to how was your weekend? So that is basically the question, how was your weekend? And the first person that I would like to participate tonight is going to be um, Andrea Sanchez. So tell us, Andrea, how was your weekend? Uh, my weekend, it's uh, very, very nice <laughs> and very, very fast. <laughs> I enjoy it a little because uh, I work in the in the in the weekend. Mm -hmm. I. I'm, I work in the uh, bakery. Oh, cool. Uh, I I make the the I I make the no I don't know what, how do you say postres? Pastry. <laughs> dessert. It's pastry. I make the, ah dessert. Yes. Oh yeah, and also I dessert. Make dessert in the yes. Uh, that's all. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like your job is interesting. All right. So, guys, um, there is one thing. Yes. When we um say dessert, we're talking specifically about los que conocemos como postres, like the um the sweet part of a meal. Okay. So that's a dessert. And when we talk about pastry, we are using a word that is like general. And when I say that it's general, it means that it will include those desserts that we're mentioning, and it also includes um, the well-known pan dulce. Okay, so when we talk about pastry, we talk about pan dulce, and we also talk about desserts. It's like basically the same, or like a global or, or general word that includes all of it. Uh, however, of course, it's always important that if you can be more specific, if you can mention or if your job is to make desserts, well, you know, say I made the desserts. Um, but if you make desserts and also um, some pastry or some pan dulce as we know it, well, go ahead and just mention, you know, that you are in charge of making the pastry. But very good. Sounds nice. Sounds like you had some good time during the weekend. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's see if we can hear now from Giselle Donado. How about you? How was your weekend? Hi. Uh, my weekend was very boring uh, and very busy mm -hmm. <laughs> for some time because I tried to advance in platform and the exercise. Mm -hmm. That was very interesting. Cool. All right. Yeah. Very nice. And did you do anything else with the family? Any movies? Any special meal? Anything like mm -hmm. that? No, nothing at all. No, nothing at all? All right. No. Nice. Well, 
Um, yeah, well, the platform sometimes can be fun. You know, there are some activities that are relatively easy. You guys can complete them with ease. And um, there, of course, are going to be others that are a little bit, a little bit tougher, a little bit harder to complete. Um, but yeah, so for tonight, something that I'm noticing is that uh, we're getting a lot of people, you know, saying that they can only be as listeners for the class. I think it's because there has been like a lot of problems with electricity all over the country. So I would like, would like to thank those, you know, who even with your um, mobile data, you're still connected. So thank you guys very much. And yes, I will not be um, requesting uh, much from you. Only, you know, if you can participate or, or be integrated in one activity at the end of the, of the lesson, it will be great. But during the rest of it, um, I am taking note here of who are the people who um, are mentioning, you know, that they don't have the capability right now of um, of answering or having their cameras on. But uh, if you can do the same as Francisco did, he notified me through here, uh, it will be better, okay? If you can let me know if you're only a listener for tonight um, through this Zoom chat instead of uh, WhatsApp. Because in WhatsApp, I'm having a look there. But I will not be as, as you know, as 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 aware as I will be through here through Zoom. All right, moving on then. Um, how about we now hear from Goches? How about you, Goches? How was your weekend? I didn't do much. For example, I just cooked uh, the food for all the week. I'm vegetarian, so I I went to the to the market uh, in order to to buy some things like vegetables, tofu, and things like that. And I watched a movie about Star Wars and a fan of Star Wars. Uh, Which so one did you watch? I, Rowan. Oh, it was cool. Rowan. Cool. Yes. But my favorite is Chapter 3. Is that what's the title of that one? It's not the Empire yeah. Strikes Back, right? now. no, no, it's the Revenge of the Sith. Of the Sith. Okay, cool, very nice. I really, I was not a fan of Star Wars for a long time. Like Star Wars has been around for so long, and uh, I used to say that I didn't like it, but then I had you know a chance to experience it, and I am now very deep into it like uh i don't know if you are following the mandalorian the series uh but i i feel like it has been one of the best series that i have watched so far and i hope they continue to make it as good are you are you, one, are you watching I, I the mandalorian i didn't i didn't see the last uh, season uh just the, the first uh just the one and the second one okay. but the third one i you didn't haven't. see it well, mm -hmm. all the episodes are out now, so you can watch them all, you know, in a row. Because, yeah, that's the good thing about it. Because um, last Wednesday, I felt so empty because it was like um, I was falling asleep in the morning. I normally, for those series, I wake up very early because I like to watch them, you know, the day they come out, the episodes. And um, I was falling asleep that day. I was very tired. And I was like, why did I do this? You know, like, why did I watch it? Because I had to enjoy it. I wanted to enjoy it. I mean, I did enjoy it, but it was not like the same. But at the end, it was a great, it was a great ending. I liked the ending for the third season. And uh, hopefully they continue to to build it up, you know, as, as they have. And there are many, or not many, but a lot, a lot of content of Star Wars coming out this year on Disney+. Plus. So, yeah. Let's keep on going with that. So very good. Sounds interesting. And uh, also, it's fun that you said that you do meal prepping because, you know, that's something that I am trying to get into as well. Um, I would like to get started on uh, prepping ahead for the week. So very good. Thank you very much for sharing. Moving on. Let's see if we can hear now from Boris. How about you, Boris? How was your weekend? <clears throat> well, uh, I start... Uh... My weekend, uh, I I going by car to Ilovasco. Uh, I stay at the park, uh, um, take some picture. Uh, uh, I visit the the short of that place. 
uh, got some ice cream. Um, after in the in the afternoon, I go to a restaurant. I went to a restaurant uh, that in a is uh, the high the peak mm -hmm. to eat some uh, chicharrones. And after that, I uh, I had to drive into my home at 5 p.m. Um, was so tight uh, to drive from Cabañas to La Libertad, but <laughs> I, I had to do it, okay? Yeah. And that's all. All right. Very good. It's, you know, sometimes I say this phrase, um, you got to do what you got to do because, I mean, you were in Cabañas, you had to get home. So, yeah, you had to drive, even though it was tiring. But, you know, I don't know if it ever happened to you when you started driving that you start uh, that you felt tired sometimes. In my case, for example, I don't. Like, I have uh, been I have been driving for almost four years now, and I never get tired of driving. Like, whenever somebody wants me to drive for them, I'll do it. No problem. Um, but I don't know when, but I think it does happen sometimes, you know, in, in life that you get tired of it and, uh, you don't want to drive anymore, but, uh, yeah, sometimes it's also because of the dangers that you face when you're driving, because it's very dangerous to like have an accident in your car. But the good thing is that you did it, even though you were tired, um, you got home and you're good. So Nice, very nice. And it also sounds that you had a very fun weekend in Iloasco. The good was that uh, uh, I I was with my family and they enjoyed all that we all that we did. Great, very good. Yeah, that's the best thing of it. Okay, okay. very nice. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. So two more people. I think we are going to hear from Ivan. How about you? How was your weekend? Hi, teacher. I've been resting all the weekend because I got an eye infection. So the recommendation of the doctor was to stay at home and don't be under the sun. Mm. And in places where there's a lot of dust, that's why I've been here resting, watching uh, some movies and resting and watching it. Movies again and resting again. <laughs> okay. That, so you only rested enough so that your eyes wouldn't hurt so you could watch another movie, right? Yes. Okay. I've been resting as long as I could. Mm -hmm. And I have to return to my work on Wednesday. Oh, good. So two days off. That's nice. Yes. <laughs> Great. And that's it, teacher. Okay, so tell us only one thing. Uh, what has been the best movie you have watched uh, during this time? Well, I saw a, a very old movie called uh, Event Horizon. Mm. It's a horror movie. It, it was very interesting. Well, I like horror movies. Well, yeah, if you're into the genre, of course you're going to like it. But, yeah, I think I... I think I will never watch a horror movie because I want to. I will do it with friends. I have done it with friends. But I don't like to watch them by myself because afterwards, I just cannot get, you know, the ideas out of my mind. You know, the, the horror ideas. Um. So, yeah, I don't. I don't enjoy it really? that much. Yeah, it happens. It happens very, very often on me. On me. But, you in, know. In my case, I like that genre. Genre? Mm -hmm. Gen, uh, genre. Genre, genre. And that's why it, I feel it's difficult for me to get impressed uh, when I'm watching some movies. I used to think about the possible endings, mm -hmm. and that's why I, I'm thankful when a movie can impress me. Oh, nice. And, well, and did so, that movie impress you? Yes, because. I I never expected the end that end. Okay, cool. And it was very inter interesting. Very good, nice. Well, I hope you do enjoy it as long as you know you don't enjoy it the same way my stepsister does because um she likes to watch horror movies. 
But whenever she does watch those horror movies, she skips the parts that have, you know, the horror in them, like the, the <laughs> thriller parts. Um, she's like watching wow. the movie, and as soon as she sees something, she's like pausing it and then skipping, 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 skipping. And after uh, everything is done, like after all the screaming and all the action, she's like, okay, play again. I don't know how, I don't know why I have asked her many times, like, why do you do that? And she's like, because I don't like the horror part. I like the story part. And, eh, you know, it that is, what... is kind of weird because the interesting, the interesting parts they the it, she used to she used to keep to skip them mm -hmm. and well well choices yeah choices that's right choices all right well um the last one for tonight is going to be let's see i think um nadia how about you nadia how was your weekend Hi teacher. Hey In my weekend, I I I can biodanza. I don't know what to say in English. Hmm. Biodanza is a therapy, a psychologic mm -hmm. therapy about the move uh, the body with a um al ritmo de no, to the say? rhythm to the rhythm. To the rhythm of the special music. It is a very nice. I recommend your practice and in the search about the biodanza and the Google. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting uh, therapy. is uh, is here in, in El Salvador. It's, it's very good. Okay, it's, it's yeah, it's biodance in English. Biodance. Bio okay. Okay. Thanks. So yeah. It's it's like a calm version of the Zumba, right? Like you don't have to dance like crazy when you're doing bio dance. But yeah, I am seeing no. here. Uh -huh, I am seeing this here some a pictures. Therapy. Uh huh. This is like a therapy psychologic. Uh -huh. it, it's no, it's no um step one, two, three. It's uh -huh. a it's about your feeling. It's about your uh, stay with the other people. Is is the Breathe. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Breathe. Yeah. It's like a uh, like a like a body expression similar to yoga, kind of, because yoga has uh, positions, but biodance has more like expressions, right? It, it's the moving. It's the moving, mm -hmm. but it's the moving uh with about your feeling. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the expression you're feeling with your body, uh with the rhythm and the special music. It's a very, oh. it, it, it's, it's a very, it's a therapy. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's an ador, no sé cómo, what is the same? Um, no? uh, sé la palabra, sé la palabra, I have used it before. Porque sí, no es sanador sí. de, no es de sanador de, de salud. Ajá, sino es mental. De, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a, a spiritual or mental. It's a healing experience, basically. Healing. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a free in the uh, uh, the class is free in in the part Cuscatlan. Oh, cool! So very good. Very nice. All right. Very interesting. Okay. Great. Okay. Very very good. Thank you very much for sharing. Alrighty then. So, uh, let's move on. Now we're going to get into the topic for tonight. So. Um, I was going to tell you guys, it's kind of sad sometimes how winter works because, um, well, <clears throat> part of my, like my routine is that I normally, before the classes, I go to the gym and today I had to leave the gym early because I felt, or it, it sounded like, um, like, I, like it was going to rain. Okay. So there was like a, the, you know, the, the regular wind that comes before the rain but it never did so very sad very sad about that but still uh it's great to hear that you guys got to enjoy you know your your weekends and now we're going to continue to talk about the passive voice before anything i only want to clarify you know when is it that we use the passive voice passive is going to be used almost always when as i said in the last week when you want to explain um, an action 
in the result that comes out of said action. So that's basically how it works. It's an action and a counteraction. Okay, so an action and a counteraction. We have been talking about problems before. And well, some of the most common problems that we have can be, for example, the pollution that our cities are getting. So uh, here we have an example, and it says that the air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. Now, I would like you guys, before we get into, into anything deeper, I would like you to start thinking about examples that you can see of problems around the city. Okay, problems in your uh, hometowns, problems in your cities, problems in your colonies that um, can have an effect and a counter effect, okay? Or an effect and a cost, because you can also see that as that, you know, it's an effect and then a cost. Um, another example or the next example says, city streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. So here you see, once again, um, we see that this example or this sentence uh, mentions that you know, city streets are being damaged. Once again, as I said on the last class that we had, when we see these examples or these sentences, they make sense, okay? You read this sentence and it does make sense, but it makes sense only up to a 50%. It doesn't make sense completely because it doesn't clarify anything. It doesn't exemplify anything. It's just like a comment. Just like, you know, you just, you just say that, but, uh, without context and without explanation. It's only because you thought of it and then you said it. But when you use the next part of the sentence, when you use the um, effect or the contrary effect, you will see that uh, here it makes it clear. Okay, it makes the whole idea clearer because you're explaining now that it is happening as a result of heavy traffic. It's not only, it's not only like because, but it's because of something. It's as a result of heavy traffic. It's not only because they want it to, um, or the, just because the streets are badly made, it's because of the heavy traffic. There, It has something behind the damaging of the streets. So think about the examples, I, as I said, los ejemplos principales, o sea, los ejemplos que quiero que piensen ustedes, más que todo tienen que ver o espero que tengan que ver con problemas en, en la ciudad, en su comunidad, en su um, colonia, ¿sí? cosas que estén pasando y también pensar un poco en el efecto que estas tienen. Now, um, when we talk about prepositions over here, it means that we're using these words. For example, here we say by. And on this other side, we say as a result of. These both have a very similar meaning, okay? By can be translated into Spanish as a few things. Importante, este no es el mismo by de despedida, okay? No nos vayamos a confundir. Okay, so um, this by, even though sound, it sounds the same, it refers to a, a few things in Spanish because um, we can understand it as por. ¿sí? Es como una de las formas principales en las cuales podemos entender esta palabra en español. O sea, decir por. El aire está siendo, eh, um, dang it, I forgot. Está siendo contaminado, sí, por los um, humos, sí, de los carros y camiones. Esa podría ser una de las interpretaciones. La otra eh, puede ser entendido, el by, como eh, a través de. Ok, sé que esa es un poco larga y no es quizá lo más común en cómo se entiende el by, pero puede entenderse de esa forma, sí, by, like for example, when you say, I got here by car, sí, I got here by car, o sea, vine en el carro o a través de, o sea, en, se, es cierto que no estamos acostumbrados quizás a decirlo así, pero eh, es verdad, una de las interpretaciones que puede tener la otra es quizá la más común de decir, en, sí, en, o sea, más que todo cuando utilizamos un artículo para poder desarrollar otra actividad. Entonces, principalmente el trasladarnos. When I say I got by here by bike, pues eso se va a entender en español como vine o llegué en bicicleta. Entonces, ahí está, ¿verdad? En, este by se va a traducir a en. Entonces, depende de cuál sea el contexto, así también va a cambiar el significado de la palabra by. 
pero más que todo va a entenderse como por, por, a través de y en. Esos son los tres principales o las tres formas principales en las cuales la vamos a utilizar en español. Y esto más que todo se los comento porque cuando estamos hablando en inglés a veces nos quedamos preguntando, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo puedo decir esto? O sea, ¿cómo puedo decir, por ejemplo, eh, llegué en carro? Sí. O sea, no siempre vamos a decir I came in car porque eso no es correcto. Lo correcto es decir I came by car. Sí. By car. El by en este caso cuando estamos hablando de transporte principalmente lo que nos ayuda es a mencionar de forma pasiva eh, el artículo o el medio, ¿verdad? Que nos ayudó a llegar hasta donde estemos en ese momento. Entonces, uh, ahora, otro de los contextos en los que se puede utilizar el by puede ser cuando estemos hablando acerca de quién hizo qué. O sea, cuando estemos discutiendo alguna situación específica y alguien quiere saber, ¿verdad? Quién hizo qué. Like, for example, there is a broken glass on the ki in your kitchen. So, The glass is already broken, but who broke it? Well, when you want to report, y eso se llama reported speech, o sea, que es el, el, el habla básicamente um, que se utiliza para hablar acerca de, no necesariamente chambres, pero como para poder um, adjudicar la acción a alguien, ¿sí? You use by. You can say it was broken by, and then you mention who broke it according to you. So... Uh, that is another of the uses that we can find for um, the preposition by. Then, when we use as a result, it's very simple. Okay, this one comes uh, very straightforward. It is very similar to its Spanish counterpart because it's como resultado de. As a result of is como resultado de. So there is no way that you can lose um, the meaning of this sentence. So, city streets are being polluted as a result of, como resultado de. Entonces, aquí lo que vamos a hacer simplemente es, ¿verdad?, recordar cómo se utiliza y entender que lo que hace es aclarar. Cuando utilizamos la voz pasiva, la voz pasiva, la segunda parte de la oración, aclara quién es el que realizó alguna actividad o quién es el que está realizando alguna actividad um, o quién realizará, en el caso específico, alguna actividad. So, you say... As a result of. Entonces es como resultado de. And then you mention, well, the noun. And in this case, the noun will be heavy traffic. Already. Um, let's see. Do you guys think you can have one or two examples for the passive continuous, um, per, pa, sorry, the present continuous passive? ¿Alguno de ustedes cree que se le pueda ocurrir una idea o un ejemplo? que tenga que ver con esto, o sea, un problema, y luego el reportar, ¿verdad?, o mencionar a raíz de qué se está dando ese problema. Like, for example, if we talk about something that happens to almost everyone, which is the traffic, or the problems with traffic, do you think you can provide an explanation using the passive voice on how or why you guys consider that the traffic has gotten to the point that it, that it has? Bueno, vamos a ver, vamos a buscar los ejemplos y creo que voy a poner nominados. Uh, let's see. Um, Ana, have you thought of one example? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Can be city street and uh, being damaged as a result. Um, no, by, by, by materials. Okay, you said city streets are being damaged, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, damaged by materials. Um, probably here we would like to. Um, set the example with a more specific more specific noun and maybe we can use something like by construction materials let's say yes uh-huh by construction that, materials like a word. construction uh -huh. materials uh-huh by construction materials so there um you will be more specific your sentence will be more specific and also the cause of the damage will um come as a more specific thing so city streets are being damaged 
by construction materials. Um, here, you can understand that um, it's because those construction materials are being carried around, are being dropped on the streets. So that is causing the streets to get damaged by them. Very good. That is a nice okay. example. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Let's see. Um, how about Miguel? Can you think of an example, Miguel, using the present continuous passive voice? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, example, the accumulation of garbage genera pollution on the corners of the streets in the city, genera okay. many flags, but small. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a darle vuelta porque eso es una voz activa. Ahora vamos a hacer al contrario. Okay. Sí. Podríamos decir, bad smells, bad smells okay, are okay. being produced by the accumulation of garbage, oh, garbage. Okay. on my city streets. That can be an example. Bad smells okay. are being produced by the accumulation of garbage on my city streets. You can leave it as by the accumulation of garbage. Okay. It's all, it's all right if you leave it at that. I added the on my city streets section just because to make it more clear, to make it clear on what you're referring to. Like um, here we're talking about, you know, your city streets. So, but uh, the example is very good. Uh, the only thing was, as I said, we had to do it the other way around. First, we place what is being, what is happening, like what um, has been done. And then we place what is causing this to happen. So bad smells are being produced. Eso es lo que está pasando. ¿Y por qué está pasando eso? Because or by the accumulation of garbage on my city streets. Nice. Very good. All right, creo que con esto más o menos entendemos eh, cómo funciona esta estructura. O sea, lo principal que necesitamos saber es que para utilizar el, el pasivo, vamos a colocar eh, en la primera sección de la oración eh, lo que está pasando, ¿verdad? O sea, que, por ejemplo, si alguien está cocinando, ustedes pueden decir, um, dinner is being cooked, ¿sí? Y luego, después de mencionar que la cena está siendo cocinada, mencionan quién está cocinando la cena. La diferencia entre la voz activa y la voz pasiva es que, por ejemplo, cuando yo utilizo la voz activa, yo digo, my mom, sí, my mom is cooking dinner. Esa es una voz activa. Eh, mi mamá será directamente la que está realizando la actividad. Entonces, por eso, eh, uy, funciona como una voz activa, ¿verdad? Diferente a cuando yo digo, perdón. Come on. Ah, este mouse me hace bien rebelde. Bueno, um, diferente a como si yo dijese um, dinner, sí, dinner is being cooked. <coughs> is being cooked. Y aquí sí, ¿verdad? Aquí utilizo el by, by my mom. <coughs> Lo que hace esto principalmente es que le da un mayor énfasis no a quién está haciendo aquello, sino qué es lo que está pasando. Entonces, por eso es muy común que se utilice la voz pasiva cuando estamos describiendo problemas, porque lo que queremos primero que nada es que el problema sea escuchado, ¿verdad? Que se mencione y que la persona esté ya sabedora de cuál es el problema que se, de que se trata la conversación. Entonces, pero si yo menciono, por, por ejemplo, primero... Um, the accumulation of garbage is generating uh, bad smells in the city. Es como que se vuelve más tedioso hasta cierto punto. Entonces, de lo que se trata en muchos momentos, cuando se usa el passive voice y con esto de los problemas, es de generar como, como una tensión más grande. Porque en muchas ocasiones, y creo que está comprobado que nosotros prestamos más atención a las cosas que nos pueden llegar a preocupar más. Sí, cuando algo a ustedes no les preocupa, por ejemplo, si yo les digo, ah, ya viene la lluvia, 
O sea, y ustedes están en su casa y ustedes están ya relajados y todo está listo, su familia ya está en la casa también. Es como que, mmm, está igual, ¿verdad? Sí, viene la lluvia. ¿Y qué? En cambio, si por ejemplo ustedes tuviesen ropa tendida, su familia no ha llegado todavía, el perro todavía está afuera y... Eh, qué sé yo, viven en una zona donde tal vez hay crecidas de agua, se van a preocupar, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, si se menciona primero, o si se menciona así como de forma espontánea, el problema eh, principal, entonces allí se supone que genera una mayor atención de parte de los oyentes. Así que eso es lo que se busca, ¿verdad? A utilizar el passive voice. First we mention the problem, and then we mention the cause. Because if we mention the cause first, It's a little bit more tedious, and that also makes people lose uh, grip on, on the conversation. But... This is culpa de coches. Coches estaba bostezando antes. Okay. <laughs> Pero lo que pasa es, principalmente, como les digo, por ejemplo, se puede utilizar también en oraciones así sencillas. O sea, no significa que solo con problemas, ¿verdad? Se utiliza. En oraciones más sencillas, lo que trata de hacer es de presentar eh, como de manera eh, principal la acción que está siendo desarrollada. En este caso es que alguien está cocinando la cena. Entonces decimos, dinner is being cooked. And then we say, by my mom, porque es simplemente para aclarar quién está cocinando la cena, ¿verdad? Um, y en muchas ocasiones, estas passive boys, eh, cuando, por, por ejemplo, no queremos darle una... Una posición de como de protagonismo a la persona que lo está haciendo es ahí también cuando utilizamos el passive voice. ¿sí? Yo no voy a decir my mom is cooking dinner si yo no quiero, por ejemplo, o digamos my brother is cooking dinner si mi hermano no quiere que se den cuenta que él está cocinando, ¿verdad? O sea, yo, si alguien me pregunta, hey, is dinner about to be ready? Yo solo digo, yes, dinner is already being cooked. Sí, no digo quién lo está cocinando, sino que solo digo dinner is already being cooked. Entonces, eso es también utilizar el passive voice. Sí, cuando queremos evitar mencionar al sujeto que está realizando la actividad. Por ejemplo, si ustedes en algún momento eh, quieren darle una sorpresa a alguien, puede ser mejor utilizar la voz pasiva porque de esa forma no involucran sujetos directos. Sí, el sujeto en este caso va a ser aquella actividad que está siendo realizada, ¿verdad? Aquí, por ejemplo, dinner pasaría a ser el subject. Luego, is being cooked sería la frase verbal. Y luego, by my mom sería pues simplemente el complemento. Pero eh, es importante, ¿verdad? Recordar que el passive voice es bastante útil y se ve por todos lados en inglés. De hecho, aquí creo que tengo un par de ejemplos más. Sí, aquí está un par de ejemplos más que siguen la misma idea. Okay, <clears throat> so you can also use these other ways of expressing what is causing a problem. Uh, it's not only it's not only that um, you can express the problems with um, by and as a result. You can also use because, you can use because, and you can also use through, and you can use due to. See, esas son otras dos, perdón, otras tres opciones que se pueden utilizar eh, para poder mencionar, ¿verdad? Problemas y para poder mencionar sus causas. So, it can be because or because of, through and due to. Because of, creo que no necesita mucha explicación. Creo que hemos escuchado ya utilizar la palabra because. Y esta palabra o el because of se va a entender eh, debido a. Sí, más que todo, debido a. Debido a. And then we have through. Through. Esta es la que de forma más específica se va a entender como a través de. ¿Se recuerdan que les dije que by puede entenderse de esa forma en español? Pero through es de forma directa, ¿verdad? La interpretación de a través de. O sea, cuando estamos hablando, por ejemplo, eh, de una situación que, es, que está tomando lugar a raíz o a través de otra, entonces allí podemos utilizar el through. Y luego... Do to. Do to es a raíz de. Sí, a raíz de. Recordemos que esas son palabras que utilizamos muy a menudo cuando estamos tratando de describir problemas, ¿verdad? So the first example is, the railroads have 
being jammed because of people's dependence on cars. So the railroads have been jammed because of people's dependence on cars. ¿sí? Significa que la, los, las carreteras, ¿verdad? Están básicamente repletas o están atoradas, atascadas, debido a la dependencia de las personas, ¿sí? Debido a la dependencia de las personas en los carros o con los carros. Then we have the next example. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. Muchos parques han sido perdidos a través de la sobreconstrucción. ¿Sí? A través de la sobreconstrucción. Se puede utilizar a través de para traducirlo también a raíz de. Ok, es similar a la utilización del do to. So many parks have been lost through uh, overbuilding. Then we have the last one. The homeless have been displaced due to overcrowding in the city shelters or in city shelters. The homeless have been displaced due to according, uh, overcrowding in city shelters. Esto significa que los vagabundos, las personas sin hogar, han sido desplazadas debido a la sobrepoblación en los resguardos o albergues, como lo queramos escuchar o entender. Los resguardos o albergues de la ciudad. Sí. Los eh, vagabundos han sido desplazados debido a la sobrepoblación en los albergues de la ciudad. So, those are other three examples you guys can use and apply when using um, the passive voice. Okay. Any questions you may have about this topic? ¿Alguna duda que les haya quedado de momento acerca de esto? All right, seems like no then. Moving on. We have now um, just a little bit of a pronunciation thing, a pronunciation practice. El otro día les estaba diciendo, ¿verdad? O sea, cómo podemos utilizar a veces eh, los linking sounds para que suene más rápido nuestro speech o la forma que tenemos de hablar. Cómo podemos también apoyarnos eh, en... Auxiliary verbs. Sorry? Oh, bueno, entonces, I'm ¿cómo...? Sorry, I'm reading this text. It's okay, it's okay, no problem. Entonces, hoy vamos a ver cómo también podemos eh, hacer una reducción, ¿sí?, de los verbos auxiliares. Los verbos auxiliares en inglés son muy comunes, eh, se ven por todos lados, y si no me creen, pregúntenle al verbo do, que el verbo do básicamente se utiliza en el 90% de ocasiones como un verbo auxiliar. Un verbo auxiliar de negación, un verbo auxiliar de interrogación. Es un verbo auxiliar muy, muy común. Por otro lado, también es el caso del verbo be. El verbo be se utiliza muy a menudo como verbo auxiliar. Pero esa sobreutilización lleva a que también estemos muy acostumbrados en el English speech to use those, um, those verbs. Si estamos muy acostumbrados a usar esos verbos, por lo tanto, hay momentos en los cuales esos verbos Pueden ser en algunas oraciones, pueden ser incluso semidesplazados. Cuando digo semidesplazados es porque tampoco los vamos a eliminar del todo, ¿verdad? Pero esto, les mencionaba anteriormente lo de los linking sounds, va bastante de la mano con ello, con este tema. Porque lo que sucede es que ayuda a que quitando una letra, quizá dos letras de la oración original o de la forma, la pronunciación, ¿verdad?, regular que tendría esta oración, hace que ahora la oración suene más rápida. Entonces, en lugar de decir fresh water is being polluted, yo digo fresh water is being polluted. Sí, fresh water is being polluted. Entonces, ustedes escuchan el is, escuchan más que todo el, el sonido de la s al final, pero no es lo más común. O sea, no es como que suena, ¿verdad? Is, sí, el is, la, la i que está ahí siempre presente cuando estamos hablando... De, de sujetos en singular entonces aquí simplemente pasamos por encima de la I, hacemos que suene un poco la S y luego seguimos con la oración so fresh water is being polluted fresh water is being polluted en lugar de decir fresh water is being polluted digo fresh water is being polluted luego tenemos la segunda oración aquí es un poco más complicado ya que estamos hablando de una palabra más fuerte ¿verdad? como lo es are ¿sí? En este caso, entonces, lo que vamos a hacer es lo siguiente. Newspapers 
newspapers are being thrown away. Newspapers are being thrown away. O sea, no dije are, sino er, 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 nada más, ¿sí? Newspapers are being thrown away. Entonces, si se fijan, hay un poquito, hay un como un segundo ahí en el cual no se nota, ¿verdad? La utilización del verbo be. Aquí no se, no, no se hace notar que yo digo newspapers are being thrown away, sino que newspapers are being thrown away. O sea, suena mucho más eh, plana la oración y por otro lado, mucho más natural también. So, newspapers are being thrown away. Luego tenemos otro. Este también es sencillo, ya que en este caso eliminamos dos de las tres letras que componen este verbo auxiliar. Este es el verbo have, eh, pero que cuando estamos hablando de terceras personas se utiliza, ¿verdad?, como has. Entonces, um, tenemos acá. Too much trash being created. En lugar de decir too much trash has been created, yo digo too much trash being created. ¿Sí? Too much trash being created. Ahora, esto nos puede llevar a problemas hasta cierto punto. Porque eh, podemos llegar a entender que eso significa que demasiada basura está siendo creada. ¿sí? En lugar de, de entender ha sido creada, podemos entender está siendo creada. ¿Por qué? Porque el sonido es bien similar al que hacemos cuando decimos is being created en lugar de has been created. ¿Sí? ¿Cuál es la única diferencia que nos puede ayudar a entender cuando estemos utilizando el has? El hecho de que el is no se usa con, eh, con los tiempos perfectos. Y el utilizar el been, aquí este, este, este verbo been, eh, este sí es un tiempo perfecto. Pero esto más que todo lo vamos a poder ver en textos verdad escritos. No vamos a poder entender así a la primera esto cuando simplemente se ha hablado. Pero en cuestiones escritas va a ser muy sencillo poder entenderlo. Conste que en ese caso pues ya no va a ser, no va a ser necesario tampoco ¿verdad? la reducción de los auxiliares porque pues sí, va a estar escrito. Pero si el, ustedes lo van a leer, ya van a estar seguros que esto es un bin y que is bin no se puede. ¿sí? Porque is es de presente y además eh, no ayuda, no funciona para hablar acerca de tiempos perfectos. Entonces, too much trash being created. Sí, too much trash being created significa too much trash has been created. Entonces, demasiada basura ha sido creada. Then we have parks, parks, a lot of um, parks been lost. Parks been lost. En lugar de decir have been lost, yo digo nada más. Parks, parks. Si se fijaron, hasta cierto punto se me hizo un poco difícil el pronunciar el nada más porque había olvidado cómo, cómo es que se juntan, ¿verdad? Estos dos. Parks been lost. Parks been lost. Entonces, es un sonido bastante sencillo y como siempre les voy a tratar de recordar, es una, una oración donde se hace bastante el énfasis en los linking sounds, en el hecho de que tratemos de conectar una palabra, la palabra del final más que todo de una, de una palabrita, con la primera eh, letra ¿sí? de la siguiente palabra. Entonces, eh, aquí, en lugar de, de yo hacer una pausa y decir parks have been lost, elimino el ha y solo me quedo con el v. Sí, new parks, new parks have been lost. New parks have been lost. Ahora, esto nos ayuda también el hecho de que aquí tengamos un bin, porque eso, eh, pues es un sonido bastante, bastante similar, ¿verdad? Eh, así que, ajá, parks have been lost. Sería otra de esas palabras o de esas frases donde utilizamos la reducción de auxiliares. Ahora, me gustaría escucharlos a ustedes y cómo lo van a leer ustedes. Sí, voy a hacer una lectura nada más de cada una y luego voy a empezar a escucharles a ustedes. So, first waters being, being wasted. First waters being wasted. Newspapers are thrown away. Newspapers are being thrown away. Newspapers are being thrown away. Too much trash being created. Too much trash being created. Parks being lost. Parks being lost. Parks being lost. Muy bien. Iniciamos. I would like to hear how you... Um, let me see. Uh, era I mean. Era I mean, sorry. How do you pronounce these four sentences? Fresh water being created. Uh, wasted, Gary. 
uh, newspaper newspapers are being thrown away too much too much trash being created a uh, part being part being lost parks kind of lost. difficult it yes it is a little bit difficult it is parks have been lost saying parks have been lost se nos hace extraño porque no tenemos quizás la costumbre, pero créanme que es algo muy, muy útil. O sea, para más que todo para la, la fluidez a la hora de hablar, esto nos ayuda mucho, ¿verdad? De que sonemos más naturales cuando nos acostumbramos a, a hacer como esta, esta unión entre una palabra y otra y reducción en la medida de lo posible de, de letras o palabritas que no sean tan, tan necesarias. Bueno. Teacher, and also because we are... We are still struggling with the right pronunciation of the words. And now you are telling us that we have to like kind of mispronouncing. I don't know how to say it. Because, I know. Well, we, we are, we are uh, struggling with that yet, the right pronunciation of the words. And now we have to learn another way to, to say it and to understand it. Yeah, that's right. The thing is that I like to share that because that way you're not going to feel at the end of the course, you know, like you just wasted your time learning the right pronunciation because that's a critic that I hear very often about teachers because many teachers, they used to tell you, you have to pronounce it like this. You have to pronounce it like this. And yes, it's okay because the right pronunciation is always important that we know how to pronounce all the words correctly, but that's not how we are supposed to speak at the end of the day. Because at the yes. end of the day, we want to be able to speak, you know, like an, like someone who actually uses English. We don't want to sound like a machine. And what you do when you pronounce everything correctly is that you sound unnatural and you also sound um, like a machine. Like you, <laughs> you, you don't use English properly. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard um, those, what can we call them? Those TikTok voices, you know, they have like different voices. And there are some words that those voices or those effects, they don't know how to say, so they sound weird. Or to us, they sound weird. They're speaking Spanish, and we listen, and, and it's Spanish. But it doesn't sound like the Spanish that we use because, well, it's a machine. So that's basically how we sound sometimes when we avoid, you know, using this, um, as you mentioned, as you or as you call them. And it's a, it's a proper way, I would say, these mispronunciations that people have. And it's like the same happens, I think, in every language. Like people just get used to what they feel more comfortable with. And uh, what we have to do as learners, in my opinion, is that we have to accommodate, you know, to the ones that use it as a as a main, a main language. But yes, I totally see where you're coming from because it is difficult. It's difficult to be learning, you know, the proper pronunciation. And then here comes this guy who tells you, well, uh, there's this other magical trick that you can use uh, to sound more natural because that's the the basic aim is that one that you can um, communicate and you feel more comfortable because if you um you hear for example the people speaking in english and uh, they just sound so quick and so fast and you just wonder why do i not do i do not sound like that and it's normally because of that, because we avoid going into those gray areas of the language, into the um, the mispronunciations, the the reductions and all that. And it's only that I, I say it. It's, for example, here, you see it. This is part of the program. It's not only that I'm saying that it works like that. It's also that um, it is proven to some extent. But yeah, it's it's hard. And I understand that, Ivan. It is, it is hard. Already then. Um, Nadia, I see that you would like to participate. Yes, teacher, I, I can try read this sentence because okay. to me, it's a very good, cool, very difficult to me. Cool thing. Okay, okay. cool. And fresh word is beginning, wash it. Newspapers are um, begin, being throw away. Mm -hmm. Too much grass being created. Part have been lost. Part been lost. All right, very good. I love the way you pronounce this one. This one sounded basically perfect. Too much trash being created. 
because that's um, how it's supposed to sound. So very good, very good job with this one. Um, in this case over here, we just probably because of the nervousness we mispronounced this one. Um, uh, but yeah, it is uh being wasted. So yes, fresh water is being wasted. Now I would like to hear someone else. How about we get to hear? Let me see. Bodies. Okay, I want to try. All right. Uh, <clears throat> fresh waters being being wasted. Mm -hmm. uh, newspapers are being thrown away. Too much trash being created. Parts being lost. Very good. Very, very good. I think in the first sentence, the problem is that I think, I don't remember because I I cannot remember that right now. Um, I think I said it, being created one time. And we all have saved the word being created. Creo que eso es lo que está pasando. Y más que se parece bastante, ¿verdad? En la pronunciación. Too much trash being created. I uh, see fresh water is being wasted. Es un poquito más enredoso el decir is being wasted que um, el decir is being created. Pero bueno, vamos a ver. You did great. You did a very good job, Boris. Very, very nice. Okay. So. Thank you, um, You're welcome. Let's see if we can get... Um, uh, okay. Jenny, how would you read these sentences over here? Okay, I'll try. Uh, fresh water is being wasted. Mm -hmm. Newspaper being thrown away. Too much trash being created. Parts being lost. Very good. Parts being lost. Parts being lost. Hay una pequeña pausa. O sea, no es como tan evidente, ¿verdad? Es pequeña la pausa que hay. Parts being lost. Sí. Y es allí donde, re, donde se reduce el hecho de decir have. Parks have been lost. Parks have been lost. Very, very good. All right. How about we hear two more people? We hear uh, from Miguel and um, Giselle. So Miguel and Giselle because your names rhyme. Okay. So Miguel, I would like to hear you reading these sentences. Okay, teacher. Fresh waters being wasted. Mm -hmm. Newspapers being thrown away. To much trash being created. Parks being lost. Parks being lost. Creo que el único en el que nos estamos pasando un poco <coughs> es con el de los newspapers. Sí, porque newspapers sí se pronuncia un poco. Newspapers are, sí, newspapers are being thrown away. No es que se elimina al 100%, sino que sí se pronuncia un poco, ¿verdad? Se dice, newspapers are being thrown away. Lo que no se dice es la A. Entonces, no voy a decir newspapers are being thrown away, sino que newspapers are. No, newspapers are being thrown away. Sí, newspapers are being thrown away. No decir are, sino er, er, nada más. Newspapers are being thrown away. Bueno, escuchemos ahora a Giselle. How did you do, Giselle? Um, fresh water is being... Fresh words being wasted. Mm -hmm. Newspaper being thrown away. Mm -hmm. Too much trash being created. Park being lost. Parks being lost. Very good. Very, very nice. Muy bien. Me pareció bastante, bastante bien. Ok. Sí. Entonces, esto se puede dar no solo otra vez, ¿verdad? No solo en este momento, en esta oración, sino que esta es una característica común también del idioma. En donde sea que ustedes se encuentren con estos auxiliary verbs, ustedes pueden simplificarlos a que suenen, ¿verdad? Así como eh, se presentan en estos ejemplos. Así que, eh, son costumbres, son características que nos ayudan más que todo en la fluidez, o sea, en el momento que estemos hablando, ¿verdad? A sonar como más, eh, como que nuestro idioma es más, o nuestro inglés, es más natural, como más regular, perdón, como que nuestro uso del idioma es más regular. Entonces, sí, sí, bien es cierto que son cosas complejas, que no es algo, ¿verdad?, que 
esté en todos los libros, en todos lados, pero créanme que a la larga quizá esto nos ayude más tanto a generar confianza como a poder utilizar el idioma de la forma en la cual se utiliza regularmente. Pero bueno, just an advice. Um, so yeah, for now, basically that is it. Um, welcome to a new week. I am very glad to, to be here with you guys again. Um, all I have to do that I have left to do is basically thank you for your attention and participation in this evening's lesson. I hope I'll see you tomorrow, guys. I hope we continue learning tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have a conversation practice. So let's hope that everyone is um, ready and sound for tomorrow. And yeah, so thank you very much. Have a really good one and see you tomorrow, people. So bye-bye for now. Bye.